All right, if we look at this problem right here, one of the things you have to understand is you know, just the recognition. This is the only place where you see your variable, okay? So your job here is to peel away the layers until only x remains. You may not do 5 minus 3 because only the 3 is connected to this factor over here. The 5 is just out there way away from everybody else. So when you peel away the layers, you start with the stuff that's furthest away from your variable, which in this case is the 5. We subtract 5 on both sides because, remember, we're trying to get things to cancel out, right? So what's 5 minus 5? That reduces to give us 0. And so now we have negative 3 times the quantity 2x minus 7 squared is equal to negative 24. Now, as I was walking around, I saw some, some things happening here. You've got to know what you can and can't do. You don't want to expand the square. Expanding the square makes the problem bigger, nastier, and most of the time when you try to expand the square, you get it wrong. So don't do that. Again, focus on the fact that this is the only variable that you see. Peel away the layers. The square is affecting all of this inside here. What is the square not affecting? The negative 3. So that's going to be the next guy to get rid of as you peel away the layers. So divide both sides by that coefficient of negative 3. And now I have the quantity 2x minus 7 squared is equal to positive 8. Again, do not square this out. It just makes it messy or wrong or both. Instead, the square is applying to everything here, right? Undo the square by using what? That's by using the square root property. So we take the square root of both sides, remembering what? Plus or minus, because we are the ones who introduced the square root. On the left side of the equation, we have 2x minus 7. On the right side is plus or minus. 8 is not a perfect square, but he does contain a factor that is. What is it? We split this up as 4 and 2. Please remember that when you are simplifying this, you are taking the square root of each of these factors. So let me just show this for emphasis. This guy is my perfect square. What is the square root of 4? That's the guy that I'm right out in front. Who is not the perfect square? The 2 that stays inside the radical right here. So this square root of 2 is that guy, and the square root of 4 gives me 2. At this point, it's just like a lot of the square root property prob problems that we've encountered. Get x by itself now by doing what? Now we add the 7. And remember, when you move terms from one side to the other and you already have a plus or minus, you put that term in front of the plus or minus because the plus or minus is only affecting 2 square roots of 2. And then what do we do? Divide both sides of the equation by 2. And that gives us x completely by itself x equals 7 plus or minus the square root of 2. And that is all over 2. If I didn't have the plus or minus, I just had the plus, could I simplify those guys and put the 7 and the square, 2 squares of 2 together? No, I couldn't do any, anything else with this. And there is no common factor for all of these guys. So this is as good as it gets. Do you guys have any questions about this? No? All right. Make sure you like and subscribe. <laughs>